Cherry viewer, welcome to Hidden Truth. We come your way again with another pack load of an interesting topic. Mary Magdalene was the apostle of the apostles. Quite an interesting topic. With me to the discussion is uh, Bishop Nana Kojo Ogurebua, who is a general overseer of One in Christ Church International, located in the United Kingdom, America, and in Ghana. We are here today with this added man of God. Today is this justice today topic. Bishop, welcome to the show. Yes, yes. How are you? you? Fine, thank you. Yeah, Mary Magdalene. How unique is this woman to the extent that he, she seemed to be the apostle of the apostles? Yeah, thank you very much. An apostle is one sent on a mission. So that is what an apostle is. And uh, the apostles of Christ were people who were taking the word out, the word of Christ, spreading the word. Now, before the apostles got the message or before uh, they realized that the mission had started, that was when Christ had, had gone. Okay. So when Christ was buried three days Mary Magdalene was the first person who cited the living Christ or back Christ back from uh, the dead. And when she tried to touch Christ, this was on John 20 verse 17. Christ said, no, touch me not. But then go and spread to my, the apostles to the others. That was what Christ told Mary Magdalene. Christ told Mary Magdalene. Okay. So Mary Magdalene was sent to the apostle. And the word apostle is one sent on a mission. Okay. So she was the one who brought the good news to the apostle that yes he has risen therefore being an apostle herself and being an apostle of the apostles i see this one with what we have just said the focal point is that mary Magdalene was nowhere seen among the 12 apostles of christ and being a woman so how come i mean what is it like uh okay uh based on uh the history and yeah. the little that i know is that uh mary magdalene was quite uh a rich person Okay. Uh, because uh, she supported the ministry. Uh, it's reached a point. Uh, first of all, who is Mary Magdalene? That is the question. Yeah. Now, Mary, that is the name, from Magdala. There was a place, a town called Magdala. Okay. So she was Mary from Magdala, therefore Mary Magdalene. Those days, names were being called, first names were given to people, like they give like uh, John, Peter, but there could be three or four Johns. So there must be something to identify, to identify which okay. Peter we're talking about. Okay. So she was Mary, the one from Magdala. Oh, okay. Therefore, Mary Magdalene. Now, what happened was that during those times, uh, she was very helpful because she was one of the people who even dressed the body of Christ before the burial. In fact, it means how close uh, the she was more or less like a family. You understand? Meaning that uh you know those times to men were more with uh what do you call it uh muscular power yeah, yeah. than women, that women yeah. you understand so women were a bit were not really yeah. outspoken like the men yeah. now what happened is that after some time uh there was a, a pope called pope gregory the great okay uh somewhere uh 591 ad after death of christ okay. uh he had a sermon and within a sermon what he said was that in the Luke's Gospel, uh, this is the woman called the sinful woman. Uh, in other Gospels, this is the woman who's been said that devil was casted out of her. So Mary Magdalene is not a significant person and should not be recognized. You understand? So that was a decree. And th from then, obviously, because you must understand that there were other Marys in the Bible. So yeah. all of the others... Or each and everyone was believed, or any of the negative Marys were believed to be Mary Magdalene. Whereby now it has been, she has been exonerated. I think it was exonerated by one of the other popes. I think John Paul or Pope John Paul or something like that. You understand? So it has come to, to light that she wasn't as we claimed she was, or she was not the Mary Magdalene or the Mary as we're talking about, but could have been a different Mary. But from your narration, I, I'm getting to see that. How come Mary was not so significant in the realm of affairs? But how come she was rather chosen as the first person to go and carry the mission at all? Why? Uh, well, one thing you must understand is that there have been other books called the Apocrypha, mm. uh, whereby obviously it's not part of the, uh, the Torah or the canon as we know now. Okay. You understand? Yeah. Whereby there were also missions and, uh, you have uh, books like Mary Magdalene, written by Mary Magdalene, Book of Judas and things like that. Those were not uh, has been, in fact, in even certain areas has been classified as heresy. You understand? Uh, if those things were maybe available to you, then you would see maybe the roles she yeah. played or yeah. things like that. Yeah. 
But since it wasn't there, you're only seeing from what is available to you. Uh, obviously, what, what your own question answers that if she was that close yeah. uh, to the family, yeah. it means that she had a say because more or less, because she, she, it, even some part of the Bible says that she was a disciple. You see, some parts of, when you go, when you investigate very well. So it means that she was somebody who had uh, what do you call it? Uh, very that close. With uh, uh, that close with, yeah. with the other disciples. Okay. And uh, because there were ter- certain times that she even financed or helped. You understand? Yeah. So, uh, as I'm saying, since it was then a masculine world, mm-hmm. you understand, things were not, uh, maybe so much copied or yeah. uh, noted as yeah, it yeah, is yeah, today. Yeah, yes. Yeah. 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 So that's I might have been. Yeah. That means that Mary Magdalene was the first one now the resurrection of Christ. Yes. According to what the Bible says, yes. And you get that from John 20, verse 17. She w- she would go and anoint, in fact, she sometimes you go and uh, check the body or to anoint the body. It means that, uh, obviously, she either, you know, she, she was a very good uh, person who was uh, in contribution of helping the work to go on. So she was actually the first person, or you, would, you might even call the first missionary or the first apostle yeah, yeah. who saw because Christianity is based on the fact that Christ died and rose yeah, on the yeah. third day. Yeah. So she was the one, the first witness to this particular uh, situation, or this particular good news. And from her, it carried on. And today we are all sitting here. Most of us are Christians. So that means that when we look at the 12 apostles, there wasn't any woman mentioned among. And now we are seeing that Mary Magdalene is the, the apostle of the apostles. Yes. How come that significance is lost totally? How come? The word apostle of the apostle means that she had the first mission to okay. spread the good news okay. to the apostles because if she had not spread the good news, the apostle would have had not, yeah. no good news to spread. So obviously, that automatically makes her the apostles of the apostles. After all, the principal duty of every apostle is to go and evangelize them. That is it. It's yeah. to, uh, to be set on the mission to preach the good yeah. news. Yeah. You understand? So that makes her that. Obviously, uh, other issues are not, uh, you don't know about much about her. Maybe I can't say so much concerning that because I have not read that in the Bible, but based on my research, I mean, I mean, right now, internet has been so wonderful to people. I mean, when one Googles, it gives you, uh, certain books that, or schools that were found at the Dead Sea Schools, yeah. gives you all some details about certain things that was not, because you know that when Constantine decided to bring the Bible as we know it today together, uh, you know, he called on, uh, I think around 600 uh, scholars. Uh, these scholars were not Christians. Some of them were judges, some of them were lawyers, some of them things like that. And some of them were bishops. So they came together and, you know, he locked them up to yeah. come up with a solution, a conclusion, the, the book. So what they did was that, okay, this writing, we're not add it. This writing, yeah. we're going to add it. You understand? Yeah. To to come as we have today, the, the, that is uh, the, the canon as we have today and the Torah as we have today. If you are yet new to your set, we are discussing today a very interesting topic on hidden truth. Mary Magdalene was the apostle of the apostle. This is quite an interesting episode. We are here with our bishop today. Tell him and the episode and see how that we can all learn from it. Bishop, uh, let me ask you this question. That it means that if Mary Magdalene was the first missionary about Jesus' mission, mm-hmm. it makes you, you women so unique in biblical truth. What do you say to that? I believe that every, uh, both men and women are unique in biblical truth because they were all, uh, they were all contributed. Yes, uh, one thing I can say is that women have always been unique, especially when it comes to, uh, Christianity because if, you know, women have that, uh, have been very helpful. Yeah. You understand? As much as other men have also been doing that. But it's, it's, I believe that both, both sides have been very much contributed to. Uh, the gospel, yes. Okay. On that note, Jesus Christ, why didn't he choose a man as a first apostle to send out a mission? But he chose a woman. Why should he choose a man? Why not a woman? You see, because the thing is that somebody has to be chosen. Okay. And that person meant, I mean, happened to be Mary Magdalene. Obviously, she would usually go and visit the body. Yeah. Uh, I think maybe, uh, what do you call it? Uh, rub it with oil and things like that. So I think <coughs> that, that was what she was doing. Okay. You see, those times, most of the men were even in hiding. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you understand? Yeah, because yeah, the yeah, men yeah. were in hiding there because they were being persecuted. They were being looked for to kill. Yeah. Therefore, 
uh, even the, the women weren't going to be spared, but the men had more disadvantage yeah. those times than the women. Okay. So it could be one of the reasons. Bishop, with reference to the topic we are discussing today, let me ask you this. Did Jesus really choose Mary Magdalene as the apostle of the apostles? Uh, I don't believe so. I don't believe so. I believe that, uh, well, whatever God does, God knows how he does it. Mm. So it will be very difficult for me to say whether he chose or not. But I would say that, uh, you know, she went there as her routine thing that she does. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, uh, saw what happened. But I believe that Christ knew uh, what was going to happen. Christ wanted her to be the one. Because, as I'm saying, because maybe if it was, uh, if Judas was alive and Judas saw, Judas might not have reported. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand? So it had to be somebody who was, who, who would really take the message forward. So, as of whether it was something that was uh, arranged or not, I wouldn't know. But I believe that God knows how he arranges things. Okay. Tell you, we know we have 12 apostles that helped Christ to carry out his mission. But we are hearing from Bishop today that there is the apostle of the apostles, who was Mary Magdalene. We are discuss having this discussion with Bishop today and knowing the insight of what Mary Magdalene really did in terms of Christ's mission. Bishop, let me ask you this one in the final lap. Yeah. Mary Magdalene being the apostles of the apostles, what impact did that carry in Jesus' mission? Uh, well, I would say that every person who was, who was part of the apostles was a significant person. Okay. Even Judas was significant because Judas betrayed Even Christ. Judas. Yes. With all the betrayer. Yes, because he, he had to betray Christ for what happened to happen. Okay. You understand? Okay. Even though he was not, yeah, yeah. Was, but what I'm saying is that that is why you and I are sitting here today. Because then, after betraying Christ, Christ was crucified, uh, took away our sins, and rose again on the third day, and somebody had to do it. So Judas did that, and at the end of the day, uh, the whole uh, process continued. And uh, another thing I would say is that the apostles were there. They also did their part. Mary Magdalene did her part. Everybody's part was uh, done properly. I, you must also understand is that it wasn't only the 12 apostles. Yeah. There were other apostles. Later on, there were more apostles. And even Paul, the apostle. Because without Paul, you and I would not be sitting here today. You understand? As Christians. You understand? So, uh, I believe that every apostle or every per person did their part uh, to make Christianity as it is today, where, whereby we are all. Mr. Orlando, what will you tell viewers? Now, making us to understand that Mary Magdalene was the apostles of the apostles. Because like our focal point is just on the 12 men, the apostles, but now we are seeing a twist. What will you tell viewers about that? No, what I will tell viewers is that uh, all the, we are all learning each and every day, and we keep on learning. And, uh, you know, one thing is that we, should, we shouldn't be, uh, we shouldn't criticize. Okay. You see, that is not ours. It's the Lord to do that. Uh, we should also study more. We should try to have an open mind to understand. Uh, because some of these people did us a very good service. And at the end of the day, they become public enemies. You understand what I'm saying? So I would say that uh, it is time that we should dive into studying and understanding more about those who helped uh, Christianity to become as it is today. Tell you, this is where we draw the curtain of this special program on Hidden Truths. Uh, we have been discussing a very exciting topic. Mary Magdalene was the apostles of the apostles. I think we've all learned one or two things from late. We have been doing really discussion with the ardent man of God, Bishop Anakujo Grewa, the general overseer of One in Christ International, located in the United States of America, United Kingdom, Uganda, and in Ghana. We'll come away again with another episode of Hidden Truth. Bye-bye. <laughs>